Illustrating Geometric Sequence, Module 3, Lesson 1. Hi! Hello once again. I am Teacher SP. In our previous lesson, we learned that in an arithmetic sequence, each term after the first is obtained by adding a fixed number to the preceding term, which we call common difference. In this lesson, we will learn to define what geometric sequence means. Find the common ratio of a given sequence. Find the next terms of a given geometric sequence. And cite examples of real life situations involving geometric sequence. Let's enjoy! In this topic, we need to know the concept of getting the ratio of two numbers. So we will start the discussion by answering this activity. Write the ratio of the second number to the first. Example 1. 2 is to 6. Paano ba isobyan? Simple lang naman. We just need to divide the second number to the first number. Therefore, we have 6 divided by the first number is 2. And 6 divided by 2 is equal to? Three. Correct. Second example, negative 3 is to 12. Ganun lang din ang gagawin. The second number is 12 divided by the first number is negative 3. And 12 divided by negative 3 is equal to negative 4. That's right. Example 3, 2 is to 1 half. So we have the second number which is 1 half divided by 2. Ayan na, fraction na. Pero madali lang naman ang fraction. Don't worry. So, what we need, copy the numerator, divided by, gawin lang natin tong fraction para mas madali natin ma-isolve siya. And we all know that 2 has an invisible denominator of 1. Therefore, we have 1 half divided by 2 over 1. And that is equal to Kopyahin lang natin yung numerator or yung number sa taas, which is 1 half, times the reciprocal of 2 over 1, or yung kabaliktaran ng 2 over 1, which is 1 over 2. And to multiply that, we just need to multiply the numerator times the numerator over denominator times the denominator. So we have 1 times 1 over 2 times 2, which is 1 over 4. Correct. Negative 5 is to negative 15. Again, simply divide the second number to the first number. So we have negative 15 divided by negative 5. And that is equal to, remember that we have negative divided by negative is positive. And 15 divided by 5 is 3. Fifth example, 16 is to 4. So we have 4 divided by 16. But remember, pwede pa siyang isimplify. We just need to find a number na po pwedeng i-divide sa 4 and a 16. And that is 4. Therefore, we have 4 divided by 4 is 1. And 16 divided by 4 is 4. Therefore, 4 over 16 is in its simplest form as 1 over 4. Example 6, negative 45 is to 3. Likewise, we have 3 divided by negative 45. And again, there is a common factor between 3 and 45, which means we can divide both numbers by 3. And 3 divided by 3 is 1. As well as negative 45 divided by 3 is negative 15. Therefore, the simple, the simple form of 3 over negative 45 is negative 1 over 15. Seventh example, 1 over 4 is a negative 1 third. Again, but to get the ratio, we just have to divide the second number to the first number, giving us negative 1 third divided by 1 fourth. 
in, di ba na-recall na rin natin kung paano mag-divide ng fraction, which we just copy the numerator, which is negative one-third, and multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator. So, instead na 1 over 4, ang kabalik na niya ay 4 over 1. Since these two fractions doesn't have any common factor, we, we just proceed with simply multiplying the numerator times the numerator over denominator times denominator. Therefore, we have negative 1 times 4 over 3 times 1, giving us negative 4 over 3. Example 8. x to the 3rd is to x to the 5th. Again, dividing the second number to the 1st, we have x to the 5th divided by x cubed. And to divide this kind of equation, we just have to copy the base, which is x, and subtract the exponent. So we have raised to 5 minus 3, giving us x raised to 2 or x squared. k minus 2 is to k. Again, we just have to divide k by k minus 2. And remember, hindi pwede mahansel yung k ha, because k here is part of the binomial k minus 2. So, ito na yung final answer natin. Example 10. 5c is to 5cd. Again, 5cd divided by 5c. And remember that 5c here has a common factor, which is 5c. And it can be both divided by 5c. Therefore, 5c divided by 5c is 1. As well as the denominator here, 5c divided by 5c is 1. Therefore, we have 1 times d over 1. Or simply as d. Now, that is how we get the ratio of two numbers. Let us use a rectangular piece of paper and fold it half once. How many rectangles do we have? We have one, two. Now using the same rectangular piece of paper, let us fold it twice and see how many rectangles do we get. We have one, two, three, and four. Now, how about folding it three times? Let's see how many rectangles can we get. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Let us put that data into this table and see how many rectangles do we get if we fold it four times. Yes, that's right. It's 16. How about folding it five times? Exactly. It's 32. And if we fold it six times, we get 64. Correct? 2, 4, 8, and 16, let us determine the pattern for each term. Now, how did we get the second term 2 from the first term 1? We can either add 1 or multiply the first term by 2. Now, how about getting 4 from the second term 2? We can either add 2 or multiply again the second term by 2 to get 4. How about getting 8 from 4? We can either add 4 or again multiply 4 by 2 to get 8. Likewise, to get 16, we can add 8 or multiply 2 by 8 to get 16. If you observe, there is a common number that we multiply to get the next term and we call it as the common ratio which can be determined by dividing any term in the sequence by the term that precedes it. Let us check. To get the common ratio, we can divide the second term, which is 2, divided by the first term. And 2 divided by 1 is simply 2. 
Now, we can also use the third term divided by the second term, which is 4 divided by 2, and that is equal to 2. Siyempre, dapat pareho lang. And we can also use the fourth term divided by the third term, which is 8 divided by 4, and that is equal to 2. Likewise, if we are going the fifth term divided by the fourth term, that is 16 divided by 8, which is the same as other any other ratio, which is equal to 2. Now, let us state whether the sequence is geometric or not. If it is, find the common ratio and the next two terms. 11, 22, 33, 44, 55, and so on. Now, as you can see, diba, pag nag-multiply tayo ng 2 sa 11, we will get 22. But if we are going to multiply 2 again by 22, we get 44. So, malalaktawan yung 33. That means... Wala siyang common ratio. But, if you will see, if we will add 11 to each term, like 11 plus 11 is 22, plus 11, 33, plus 11, 44, plus 11, 55. Therefore, since we are adding a fixed number, it is not a common ratio. And what do we call it? That's right, it's a common difference. So, in this sequence, it is not a geometric sequence because there is no common ratio. Instead, there is a common difference of 11 and it is called an arithmetic sequence. Now, how about this one? The sequence negative 25, 5, negative 1, and 1 over 5. So, let us see if there is a common ratio. By solving, ratio is equal to the second term divided by the first term, which is 5 divided by negative 25 is equal to negative 1 over 5. How about getting the ratio of the third term and the second term if we will arrive at the same number? So, we have the third term is negative 1 divided by the second term is 5. So, negative 1 over 5. Checking it, they have the same ratio. Therefore, we can now get the next two terms. That would be the first term, second term, fourth term, fifth term, the sixth term. So, that would be 1 fifth, which is the last term, times the common ratio, which is negative 1 5, and we arrive at negative 1 over 25. And the term after negative 1 over 25, we multiply it again by the common ratio, which is negative 1 over 5. And that is equal to positive 1 over 125. There are two terms in each geometric sequence. So, since nasabi na na geometric sequence siya, therefore, meron tayong ratio. But we have to find first what is the common ratio. And to get the common ratio, that's the second term divided by the first term, which is 8 divided by 4, which is equal to 2. Check natin kung tama rin para sa third term and the second term. 
So we have 16, which is the third term, divided by the second term, 8. And 16 divided by 8 is equal to 2. So since pareho yung ating common ratio, we can now get the next terms. And after 16, to get a sub 4 or the fourth term, we just have to multiply 16 by the common ratio, which is 2, and that is 32. And to get the fifth term, or a sub fifth, that would be the last term, which is 32, times the common ratio, which is 2, and that is equal to 64. Therefore, the term after 32 is 64. How about this one? We have to find the missing terms, pero nasa gitna. But it is stated here that it is a geometric sequence. Therefore, meron siyang common ratio. And we can use this last two consecutive numbers to get the common ratio. And that would be ratio is equal to 81 divided by 27, which is equal to 3. Therefore, ang common ratio natin ay 3. To get the second term, we have to multiply the first term, which is 1 third, times the common ratio of 3. And we, we know that 3 and 3, they have a common factor, which is 3, or can be divided by 3. And that would be 1 times 1 is equal to 1. Therefore, the second term is 1. Now, let us get the third term. To get the third term, we just need to multiply the second term 1 by the common ratio of 3. And that is 1 times 3 is 3. To get the fourth term, we just have to multiply this term by the common ratio or 3 times the common ratio of 3, and that is equal to 9. So the missing terms are 1, 3, and 9. Assume that you have a flu virus, and two of your friends came to visit you, but you forgot to cover your mouth while you were sick in bed. On the next day, they also got the same flu. Let's assume that each friend spreads the virus to two of their friends through their droplets. Assuming that this pattern continues and each sick person infects two other friends every day, if each person infects two more people with the flu with virus, how many persons are expected to be infected on the fifth day? That is right. On the fifth day, we already have 16 infected people. And that is true geometric sequence. I hope you have learned something new this time. Hope to see you again on my next video lesson. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Bye!